Oh, hello folks. So I plan to do this video over a month ago. I watched uh, Queeves, one of Queeves' last videos before he took his little hiatus on his Ocal culminator that he purchased, or not purchased, that uh, a company sent him to review. And I bought one right after his review because I've been in the market for something like that. And I wanted to use it first. So I, I actually had a chance to culminate my scope. And more importantly, I went out afterwards to test it out to see if it, it actually culminated it. And it worked. I'm uh, very impressed with it. Okay, I'm now over in my little workstation in my garage. Works station in my garage and I have a lot of uh, astronomy equipment stored here as well as a shed. I think it's taken over my house. But here it is. It comes in this nice box. But what I want to show you on this is this little serial number. That's really important because you're going to need it. I got the standard version, not the uh, one you can use with a tablet. I got the one you need your computer to do. And they give you this nice cord with it and they give you the camera and that's all they give you no directions but one of the most important things on the camera that serial number is written again so don't lose that number it's really important and i'll tell you why i'm kurt zapatello and you're watching astro quest one okay my Three main goals that I want to get out of this video here is I want to make it quick and I want to show you how to download the software, how to copy one of the files over that you're going to need, what button to press in order to start the program, and then I actually want to do it. Now, Queeve did this, but Queeve must be a software engineer or something like that because he just blasted through stuff and I, I actually I missed a couple things. So I want to go through those things a little bit slower. Now that Ocal culminator was originally designed for a Newtonian reflector, but they came out with a video about six months ago that is Ocal, and where they used it for a, a, a Schmidt-Cassegrain reflector, I believe it was Schmidt-Cassegrain, and then Queeve did his video used on his Schmidt-Cassegrain. There's been another video recently by this guy named Martin, well, uh, who I will provide a link to in the comments section. And he did it with a Maksutov Cassegrain, which is similar to this. His video is really, really thorough, very, very long. It's, it's over an hour, but it's, uh, it covers everything. And I'm gonna do it with my Schmidt Cassegrain. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the first thing you have to do is go to the Ocal website, and then you go to where it says download, and you got three versions here. I chose this one because I have a Windows machine, so you just press download. And what happens is when you download it, I already downloaded it, you get these three folders in it. The only folder you really need is this one right here, the one that says OK Electronic Culminator for PC. And there's another thing you should download as well, and that's this Calibrator Centering Code in Excel. You want to be sure and download that. All right, once you have that, let me show you what this thing looks like. This fo folder that has everything has all these little files in it, but there's a couple of very important ones. There's one that says focus right here, and it has some original uh, serial number. That's what this is. It's a sort of like a serial number. It recognizes that camera, but you got to replace it. You got to you got to delete this and put the one they give you in there. Now, where do you find that? Well, we go back to this uh, folder right here, and we go to that center calibration code open that up okay i actually uploaded this uh this folder into a google spreadsheet rather than excel but these are all the serial numbers of your camera so you gotta look for it and mine was i don't know if you guys remember it's uh 1d835 1d835 so i look up here 1d 
there it is. That's my camera. So you got to cut in, well, you got to copy this and put it into that focus file. So whatever one they give you, uh, delete this and put that one that uh, for your camera. And that's the specifications for your camera. And one other thing before we get down to dirt and business here, I'm going to open up this file again. This file right here is the one that starts the program. Okay. So I'm not going to start it yet because what you got to do now is connect everything up. Okay. You, you got to connect that camera to your telescope and then you're, then you're ready to start this program. Okay. So, but, but again, this is the one right here that you got that runs everything. The OKL 1.32 EN. All right, let's go to the next step. I'm going to try to connect everything up. Okay, when you do this, make sure you have everything all set up because you're going to have to take some stuff apart. Like I had to take my uh, camera and everything off. And I needed my little T adapter that has an M42 threads on it. And this camera connects directly up to that uh, T adapter. And I'm just going to put this on the back end of my telescope. I adjusted it so it was looking, so it was like looking, so the camera was looking up, but it doesn't really matter. Now I'm just going to connect everything up to the computer and I'll show you what we see. Okay, one other thing. Well, I've got the wire connected up now. That's all you really need. You just need to wire to the computer, to the camera, and everything should be ready to rock and roll. Whenever you're doing culmination, you ought to want, at least on an SCT, you want to have it so the telescope is pointing up directly up as much as possible, uh, whether you're doing it at nighttime, you're looking for a star or whatever, because you want the, the plate to sit down flat or nearly flat on the uh, surface that it resides on. Hi everyone. So I'm doing this portion of it the next day. I ran out of light the last time when I did it. And also it didn't, the, I tried to do it and I wasn't really happy with how it came out. So it's really bright out today. and. So I'm gonna do it now and I can do it much more slowly and relaxed. Oh, by the way, I can show you the, how I adjust it, which most of you guys know, I have these bobs knobs on top of my uh, corrector plate to do the adjustments. So that's where I'm gonna be doing my adjustments. I really like those bobs knobs because it makes it really, really easy to do the culmination rather than fiddling, fiddling around with a screwdriver. Okay, now I'll get started. Okay, so we're going to open up the program by going to that OCAL EN, run it, and it pops up on the screen. I'm going to minimize this thing, and we're going to turn on the camera, and there it is. Looks really cool. So you might notice it's really, really, really small right now, so all you have to do is just turn the... Uh, on your, on your mouse, you just turn the dial, and I can actually make this a little bit bigger too. All right, and let, before I get started, let me just show you some of the uh, controls you have on the camera. You have this uh, camera settings, and you can actually control the brightness if you want, if it's too bright, and it may be a little bit too bright. You can adjust the contrast. Okay. Actually, that looks pretty good right there. And it can adjust the saturation, sharpness as well. And we'll just leave the sharpness where it is. And you come over here to camera control. And you can actually do some adjustments with the focus too. So it looked like it was in focus before. There, that looks better in focus right near the way I had it. But you do have some focus control. And you can ex control the exposure if you want. Yeah, it looks a little too bright. Oh, actually not. not. Not too bad right there. Yeah, plus you can see the camera now. So we'll leave it right here. And I'm going to press apply. Okay. Okay, so now what you want to do after you get the thing looking the way you want it to is you want to press this center offset button, even though there's nothing there yet, and then press enable. And this green circle appears. Now, it may be that the green circle is 
a thickness of two. Now here it is, you can see I made it really thick. And what this center offset button is, you want it centered, uh, use the center offset button so it's, it, it, the circle's lined up with the draw tube, if you will. Okay, so watch what happens when you take it away. Oops, watch what happens when you take the center offset button. So you wanna put it to um, use that. So now everything's gonna be lined up with the, uh, the draw tube. And I'm gonna make it back to a thickness of one again. And let's see if I want to adjust it a little bit more, that center offset button. You can press the, um, the vertical. It goes up and down a little bit. See how it goes up and down with the vertical. And then here's the uh, horizontal. You can see it's just there. And actually it might be a little bit too big. Let me go 194. All right, and... And probably a little bit up more. And probably a little bit, um, I think it's still a little bit too big. 93. Yeah. And we'll go a little more that way a little bit. Oh, that looks pretty dang good to me. Next, you want to put, now, th now that was the outside draw tube, if you will. You want to put a circle ar right around the primary mirror, and I'm going to make that in red. And there we go, we'll put it like it's, it normally it's, its default is two. And there it is, that, that looks pretty good, actually. So I'm going to make it a uh, thickness of one. And you can adjust the size by where it says radius. Usually when you do this, it's gonna be way out of like a thousand or something like that. You just keep bringing it down until it appears on your screen. And I happen to know mine's about 139 or something like that. 39. And so that looks like a good size. We'll make it one. And as, as expected, it's lined up. It's already culminated. <laughs> but I'll, I'll make it unculminated for you and show you what, it, um, what you have to do. And then, you want to get one another one around the camera so the, the camera's right in here and we'll press enable and there it is I, I already did this before earlier so it's that's why it's lined up at the exact uh, thickness so I, as i said i can make it out of here and make it up. and i happen to know it's about 20 or 18 so i'll just put it at 18 and there we have it and it's all lined up all right, now this is what it looks like when it's culminated. If it wasn't culminated, so I'm going to do something dastardly here. I'm going to put it out of culmination just so you can see what happens. So I'm going to go adjust my corrector plate and make it out of, out of whack. Out of whack. All right, so I've. All right, there. That's probably what you're going to look like when you when you do this. It's going to be, you notice the, the primary mirror is not lined up at all. And it turns out, actually, when I first did this, it was way out of whack. <laughs> it was nowhere near culmination. So there we go. I just took my beautiful, nice, culminated mirror and put it out of whack just for this tutorial. <laughs> so anyways, here I go. So now I'm going to start culminating it. Let's pretend it, pretend it was like this. It was really bad when I started. And you just start adjusting the... Start adjusting the adjustment screws until you get the primary mirror, the primary mirror right in that center, that center red circle. How's that look? That looks pretty good to me, actually. Yeah, good. Okay. All right, well, that's it, folks. That's how you do it with the uh, Ocal Combinator. Hello, folks. I'm going to keep it short. It's really cold out now. It's like 20 degrees Fahrenheit and minus 10 degrees uh, Celsius or something like that. And the winds, it's kind of a little breezy. I'll tell you right now, they're the, this is the best culmination I ever had. All the stars in the whole field of view have those nice donut shapes, and that's never occurred before. 
Okay, folks, well, I want to show you what this, or look, I want to show you what the stars look like. And here they are. This is SH2243. It's a very faint reflection nebula that's kind of an orangey color, but you can't see it in my exposures here. But you can see all these stars, and I'm pretty impressed with this Ocal collimator. And uh, they, the stars look really good. I'll, after I get done with this sequence, I'll show you what it looks like with the uh, with the donuts. I'll take it out of focus and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, I'm done with my sequence now. Yeah, so look at that. Here, I'll do it one more. Let me take it out of focus even more. Well, anyways, you can see it like this. Uh, we don't have to have it reloaded. But you can see how the donuts look pretty good. Even the ones down in the corners. Now, when I, the last time I did culmination using the stars, I, I never, it was never culminated in the corners. It, it wasn't this good, I should say. And so I, I am really impressed with this, uh, this culminator. It was real easy to do. So, okay, folks, well, here's some final thoughts I have for you. Some of the positives. Well, you get a really accurate culmination and it's at least rough to perfect all depends on how well you do it you're able to culminate prior to imaging i.e during the day so you're not fumbling around in the dark also you can eliminate the need for good nighttime scene conditions since you're doing it in the daytime it doesn't really matter it's a good price about 180 dollars us dollars and it's much cheaper than the hotec laser culminator I think it's less than half the price of that thing. So, and I think it's easier to use than, than that as well. And as I said, this is simple to use and it's even better than using an artificial star. I purchased an artificial star, a cheap one, and I tried using it during the summer and I didn't have great results with it. And not only that, the artificial star, you, you have to do a horizontal, this thing, it's better because you can point the telescope upwards, which is what you should do anyways. Now, some of the negatives, well, there's not that many. The one big thing is the camera, your imaging camera has to be removed so you can attach the OCAL camera. And that's why I wouldn't do it when I'm doing a multiple night session or I'd avoid it. I try to avoid it because I don't want to take the camera off in between imaging. So that's one negative of this thing. And the other one is it doesn't really come with written instructions. But both of those negatives really aren't really that bad in my opinion. I think this thing's definitely worth it. And I'm very happy I purchased it. Okay, well, I think that's all. I thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time.